How can cities preserve cultural continuity despite neighborhood change? Take Pittsburgh's Hill District, once a bustling multi-ethnic enclave of 55,000 people, now home to only 9,000. Longtime center of the city's black community and with a large Jewish population until the 1950s, its lower hill was completely demolished as part of Pittsburgh's aggressive redevelopment efforts. Thousands of people were uprooted. And the end result? A singular civic arena in a sea of parking lots, where homes, businesses, and a lively community once stood. Two blocks east, where the bulldozers stopped, stands the August Wilson House, boyhood home of the famous playwright. Left vacant and in ruins, the building is now being restored into a living testimonial to its cultural impact. This is Saving the City. Today we're talking about cultural preservation and August Wilson. You may know August Wilson's plays from Denzel Washington's recent film adaptations. And the Oscar goes to Viola Davis. More recently, Netflix teamed up with Washington on another Wilson adaptation, 2020's Ma Rainey's Black Bottom. So here's to August Wilson, who exhumed and exalted the ordinary people. So who was August Wilson? A Pulitzer Prize-winning playwright, he is best remembered for a cycle of 10 plays often called the Pittsburgh Cycle, because nine out of 10 of them are slice-of-life stories set in his native Hill District in Pittsburgh, where he was born in 1945. You can actually figure out the individual streets and addresses where most of the plays are set. Salah Udin is a community advocate and former city councilman in Pittsburgh okay. who went to elementary school with Wilson. He was able to capture black life as it is. That's what made August's plays so powerful. He didn't change the way we talk. He treasured the way we talk. August said, Let's just put it in a story as it is and put it on stage and see what happens. I've been standing in the same place for 18 years. Well, I've been standing with you. Get my hand. Get my hand. Let's live. Yeah, this is the business. I can't tell you who to sock it to. The collection of plays is also called The Century Cycle because each one is set in a decade of the 20th century. It encompasses a century of change. Kimberly Ellis is August Wilson's niece. He taught all of America by reflecting black culture and that journey throughout the 20th century. And so once people heard their stories, they would come to him and say, that sounded just like my uncle. That's my aunt. My mom says that. It's amazing that he captured African-American voices, even in regionalism, even by locating in the specific, um, in the historic Hill District, in the city of Pittsburgh, he found the universal. Let's locate ourselves. Pittsburgh's downtown sits on the point by the banks of the so-called Golden Triangle, where three rivers meet. Up the way and up the hill, is the Hill District. It became home to anyone who came for Pittsburgh's boom times and needed a cheap place to live without crossing a river, black, Jewish, Polish, Italian, or otherwise. There were enclaves, but they overlapped, and the place became a cultural hive of entertainment and locally owned businesses. My memories of the Hill are quite vivid. It was a joyful, happy time. We didn't have a lot. We were poor working class family, but we enjoyed watching the weekend parade of people going up and down Fullerton Street. And my memory of the fear that struck us when we heard that everybody was gonna to have to move. In the spirit of urban redevelopment starting in the 1950s, the city declared most of the area a slum and it was raised to make way for a shiny new civic arena. Pittsburgh, handle it! 8,000 people were displaced by this demolition and devastation of our community. The powers that be decided to 
give all of the development rights to all of this land to the Penguins hockey team. And so now we have to negotiate with the Pittsburgh Penguins about what's going to be built on this area. The arena was eventually declared obsolete and demolished in 2012, leaving only the parking lot. It, it was as though half of our body had become amputated. Once the city had to make a decision about where people were going to move, they decided, unfortunately, to base that decision on racial grounds that continues to plague the city to this day. Pittsburgh is a very racially segregated city. This is not to say the neighborhood was entirely destroyed. The Hills residents organized to protest, drawing a line at Crawford Street. The August Wilson House was saved by being just a couple of blocks up the hill. Paul Ellis is August Wilson's nephew. So we are in the official August Wilson house. The house was very meaningful uh, for him, not only because it was where he grew up, but because of uh, he knew it would represent a unique opportunity to preserve his legacy at some point. He said that he didn't want it to be a museum, and so we were on the same page about that from, from the beginning. We're going to have a wide variety of programming. Uh, there will be uh, reading roundtables, there'll be writers' workshops, there'll be significant uh, signature uh, theatrical productions so that people could actually take advantage of opportunities that aren't ordinarily afforded to them, especially in the African-American community. More than just an arts center, the house is intended to be an anchor for revitalizing the whole neighborhood. The beautiful thing is that Hill residents um, came together and developed their own master plan. We actually have our own community-centered master plan. We stuck together for two and a half years. And I'm so proud of the community residents because it's a very boring process. All that to say. There were very few rewards, <laughs> you know. There wasn't even great food at the meetings and things, you know. We didn't even have, like, many incentives. But the love of community and the caring, that's extremely important because the August Wilson House does not stand alone. Local architect Rob Fuffman is helping to realize the plan. I learned more and more about the importance of the hill in our cultural history of not only our city but our country. And so as an architect working on questions of rebuilding through preservation, I've found these projects to be very rewarding because they sort of fly under the radar screen. They're not the big, super fancy projects that everybody's pointing to to say, this is our future. It's the little projects that make a difference as catalysts in our neighborhoods. And August Wilson made it very clear he did not want it to be uh, a museum. He wanted it to be a, a place of life and teaching the next generation of artists. And so it's a very unique opportunity to find a way to reconstruct and rebuild and restore that house uh, to achieve those goals. Washington was at the August Wilson House in the Hill District today. He's been trying to raise money to save the historic home, and today they made a big announcement. The words of August Wilson have spoken to Washington so much so, he's leading the way to raise monies to complete the transformation of the August Wilson home. I love August Wilson. He, he touches my soul, our souls, in a way that uh, no one I've ever read has. It's mean, surreal. Um, he's got to go because we got people inside waiting to okay. give us money. Okay. It's the nature of cities to change, but that doesn't mean their cultural threads have to be irreparably torn apart. For the Hill District, August Wilson's life and work left an indelible mark. Perhaps fittingly, in 2021, the U.S. Postal Service memorialized Wilson with a forever stamp. It's only a half a mile by a half a mile, but that's a city. It's made of bones.